Welcome to the History Law Channel. You join me here today and I'm on the junction of Burlington Road and New Kings Road here in Fulham. And we're here today to look at the thing behind me. This was part of the Fulham Pottery. The only thing that's left of it now is this old 19th century kiln that's now Grade 2 listed. But the pottery here was a big influence on not just the pottery industry in London, but it also influenced the potteries in Staffordshire as well. Let's find out about it. Welcome to London. Fulham Pottery was founded here by John Dwight in 1672. From the earliest days, the pottery was a pioneering manufacturer of salt glaze pottery. Salt glaze is where a handful of common salt is thrown into the kiln at the higher temperature firings and it reacts with a glaze and produces a glossy, translucent and orange peel-like glaze. John Dwight also took out patents for the production of stoneware, another process of firing clay pots and bottles whereby the glaze becomes nearly white, rather like stone. These vessels has a smooth glaze unlike the rough surface caused by normal firing. This was useful for making vessels that held food and drinks. The glaze was also used to produce ornamental items that were further decorated, like plates and vases. John Dwight is now thought to have been born sometime between 1633 and 1636 in Tottenham in Gloucestershire. He was the son of George Dwight, a farmer. He studied at Oxford University and worked as an assistant to Robert Boyle, the chemist, physicist and inventor in the late 1650s. In 1661, Dwight was appointed registrar and scribe of the Diocese of Chester. In the same year, he earned a degree in civil law at Christchurch, Oxford. At the end of the 1660s, he turned to a new career. He sold his church post and invested in a career as a potter. Ambitiously, he wanted to replace all imported ceramics by his own products, and he experimented on a large scale. A second patent followed, and Dwight attempted to enforce it with extensive litigation. The targets of his legal action included John and David Ellers, Dutch silversmiths who became potters and one of the first manufacturers to move to Staffordshire. And litigation was also against the Wedgwood brothers, equally famous Staffordshire potters. Dwight died in 1703, and his business was carried on by his descendants for some time, but with gradually diminishing success. In 1815, a young John Dalton was an apprentice here, and he was noted as a big ware thrower. He went on to found Dalton & Company, which is now the well-renowned Royal Dalton. Many potteries have been set up across London over the centuries. An early site established in the 16th century was close to the present-day site of Southwark Cathedral. Further east, potteries sprung up in Rotherhithe and Bermondsey. Lambeth had several potteries, all near the riverside to allow clay suitable for pottery to be delivered by ships. It was here that Dalton started his own company. Bow Pottery in East London became famous for a time, as did Chelsea Pottery. The Fulham Pottery was less well known throughout its history. London's early industrial history may have been swept away in the cause of progress, but sometimes little bits still exist. And if you do come down here, you can see part of it hidden in plain sight. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you appreciate these videos. If you do, please subscribe. And if you want to know when videos are uploaded, there's a little notification bell just down below. If you want to see what we do outside of these videos, then look in the description, see what James does on his YouTube channel, Last Line Films, or go to historylord.co.uk and see about my walking tours of London. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you very soon.